Asleep A wasp-like hum in the room. The something going on that passes for silence in these quarters. For we want to believe in silence. That our repose leaves nothing behind. Empties all the chambers. Takes the present into our dreams with us. And leaves a void that works like acid on all that was. Car headlights on the wall mean nothing. The cramped, ungrowing furniture, nothing. The church spires, tired bells, nothing. They are but the residue of day, less than echoes. The last creaking stare on the way out of perception. We have come to an agreement Tired of the world, in its inalienable unlikeness, we will give up coaxing it out. So the night darkens, the curtain drifts out the window, the very lateness of the hour ceases. We sleep side by side with eternity and never touch. Big East Lake this is the world, impenetrable, the flat, black pupil that doesn't look at you. You want to be wooed, to praise it. Instead, you're bored. Beauty, what of it? You feel yourself at the bottom of a well. Love of the landscape can't be roused. Nature has shifted into your blind spot. No longer a vision. No longer your ego revealed to itself. The trees immersed in growth, occupied by their own being. The water slips off your paddle. The shore slips into the water's darkness. You shift uncomfortably in the bow, haven't the heart for this. The light travels a little slower here, the trees quieter, sober. If it weren't too late, you'd go back on whatever promise brought you here. Days Without End Spring rages like a fire in the house, wants to eat every splinter. It forces its way into buds that explode like pockets of gas, tears new life from the thin tissue of what was. The ground shivers. The trees ache under the pressure, look to the sky for a cool blue rain. A sign that God doesn't sit idly by while creation burns. That he too endures the heat of his love. The great fire he's pushed upon the living. Drought. And overhead, the birds. Chips of bone in the sky. Remnants. Fact of the world's brokenness. You look up, asking to be forgiven for a crime you're still trying to locate. You know it's out there. Stare toward the edge of the marsh, the welt of bright water shrinking before your eyes. A sky of pre-worldly clarity only confirms your guilt, an inherent misalignment that keeps you from knowing even a fraction of what you see. You cross the heat-ridden ground, the sweet, brittle scent of sage rising underfoot. So easy to pretend a single word will occur to you, and that it will do all the good anyone could hope. The earth is parched and lonely, 
relies on dignity to protect it. Each thing hanging by the thread of itself. Bleating crickets. Rustle of dry stalks. The silence pushes you toward yourself. It's time to walk deep into the heart of what troubles you. Joy. Everything leafs out as though in praise. Beaky water lilies rise from the pond-stirred muck. The imagination calls to the world, its inflected echo coming back to us as light rippling on the back of the reel. Who can say what goes on in the darkened room from which these idle green days emerge? For all we know, being here might be another kind of absence, a hole through which our lives come pouring as we fade slowly in another world. But this world is the one we know, the one we hold on to, filling ourselves with its visible truths. We work through the hours, always too few, packing them into our greedy bodies. Yet we fall prey to the occasional twinge, hear faintly at our backs a thrumming like the bowstring of a shot arrow. And that sound is what clinches it, our love of this place, its thin blood penetrating to our very quick. Vanity. So beautiful it can afford to be careless. The tree has dropped handfuls of white petals and now leans down to admire itself in the fragrant pool. Take even a single flower. See how it mirrors itself and how pleasing you find the symmetry. Like you, it wants the world to be endless, headless and tailless. It wants to be repeated again and again, for despite its luster and ghostly appeal, Despite the way its radiance is dispersed across the field of light, it, too, is a stranger. So badly does it want to regain the intimacy before it knew to cry again that it tries to drown out the rest of the world, multiplying itself in the eye until nothing else can enter. And you don't try to stop it. If anything, you open your eyes wider, for the impact is gentle compared to the loneliness that grips you when you look around and see the green filtered light, the matter-of-fact gravel, the slow but steady differentiation of leaves, thoughtful and private. Each thing so separate, so painfully distant, that you begin to pin your hopes on the impossible, praying that the flower image will find a way through, will destroy the masonry and emerge from the cloud of plaster into another realm. And you might follow, give up the apparatus of the mind, and step into a place where telling the difference between this and that means nothing. You'd give almost anything if you could find a place like that, if anyone could, if such a place could be said to exist. A place where the tree and all its flowers are indistinguishable from the earth itself. Where time falters, where the eye blinks and is done. <laughs>